Dear students, I hope you are all well and studying in your home. Last week we were discussed about the transpiration and its process by the different experiments. Today we will discuss about the types of transpiration. So depending upon the aerial part of the plant through which transpiration takes place, it can be categorized into three types. That is first stomatal transmission uh, transpiration so loss of water vapors through microscopic pores or stomata surrounded by a specialized guard cell is called stomatal transpiration stomatal transpiration accounts for up to 90 percent of total water loss from the plant plants through transpiration it is thus most important physiologically so if we talk about the stomatal transpiration it occurs through stomata and 90% of transpiration takes place through this process second type of uh, transpiration is cuticular transpiration some transpiration takes place by the direct evaporation of water from the outer cells of epidermal cells this layer is impermeable to water but some loss does take place through this layer water loss due to evaporation through cuticle is called cuticular transpiration it constitutes up to 10 percent of total water loss from the plants through transpiration it should be noted that greater the thickness of cuticle lesser will be the rate of transpiration okay as you can easily understand if uh, cuticle is thick it just check the uh, process of transpiration okay so it takes place through the cuticle that's why it is known as cuticular transpiration next type is lenticular or lenticular uh, transpiration water loss through the lenticels in woody stems and fruits is called lenticular transpiration it constitutes about one to two percent of total water loss through transpiration Lenticels never close, they will uh, remain open all times. Okay, so lenticels are open every time in plants. So you can see lenticular transpiration by this figure also. Okay, these are lenticels here, and this is the bark of a plant just beneath them. These are lenticels found, and transpiration is take place through them. So we discussed about the stomatal apparatus or stomata first. Stomata, that is a singular term is used stoma for one stomata. Okay, or when we talk about the only one, it is known as stoma. Or microscopic pores surrounded by two specialized kidney shaped or double shaped card cells. Okay, last chapter also you were read about that. They are present in the epidermis of leaves and young green stems. They are chiefly concerned with gaseous exchange. You can see their figure also the opening and closing of the stomata. You already read about them. And these are the guard cell and this is stoma. It is open condition. It is in closed condition. And guard cells turgid and stoma opened. You can see here stoma is opened and here is close in which card cell are flex it during photosynthesis transpiration and water loss through transpiration transpiration is our inevitable process through open stomata okay it is a gaseous exchange mainly takes place uh, during photosynthesis respiration and water loss through transpiration takes place by these pores only Transpiration is our inevitable process through open stomata. The guard cells surrounded up, surrounding a pore are highly specialized epidermal cells with chloroplast. They are placed side by side parallel and are kidney shaped in dicot leaves. They are however dumbbell shaped in monocots. Okay, in further classes or in next chapter you will be read about the dicots and monocots in details. In which you can see that uh, kidney shaped guard cells are found in dicots and in dumbbell um, shaped found in monocots. 
their walls are differentially thickened the opening inner walls of guard cell are thickened crescentially uh, crescentically in the middle and are thus inelastic okay you can see the opening inner walls of the guard cell they are inelastic in nature it means uh, not uh, just for spread too much the remaining walls are thin and elastic okay the remaining wall are thin and elastic also that's why they do easily the opening and closing of stomata now we read about the mechanism of stomatal transmission how the transmission uh, transpiration takes place through stomata water absorbed by the root of a plant moves upward through the xylem vessels as we know of roots stem and reaches up the leaves this is called ascent of sap in the leaves are present a large number of spongy mesophyll cells they are exposed to numerous intercellular spaces between them okay within them intercellular means within them within uh, two different uh, spaces okay the turgidity of mesophyll cell is maintained by the osmotic diffusion of water from the xylem vessels to the leaves the water from these cells keep on evaporating through their exposed cell walls the air inside the intercellular spaces get saturated water potential of the air in the intercellular spaces of the leaf becomes higher than that of the air present outside the leaf as a result water vapors from the sub stomatal spaces move to outside through open stomata the entire movement of water vapors from the surface of mesophyll cells into the outside atmosphere in the result of diffusion you can see in figure also okay this is the movement of water through a leaf during transpiration okay it is just uh, carried out by xylem and uh, in next process we as it is a we as part of a leaf sowing loss of water from mesophyll cell uh, due to transpiration okay xylem vessels is here and water passing along the cells wall you can see here by arrows it shows and a small proportion of water enters cells by osmosis okay and evaporation of water from the cells okay these uh, the water carries out it and from the cells this is evaporated through air the cell wall that are losing water due to transpiration replace it by drawing more of it from the adjoining cells okay the cells found within the cell wall which is losing the water and it is eventually replaced most of this water travels along the cell wall by imbison whereas a very small amount of water enters by osmosis thousands of cells of the leaves lose water due to transpiration it causes pulling of more water from below through the xylem vessels the transpiration pull thus created can draw up water up to the height of the plant which can reach be 50 meters or even more so you can see that much large uh, plant can be okay can be draw up water okay from the uh, from through the xylem vessels it transpiration pool which you, you already read in last chapter also so for better understanding mechanism of stomatal transpiration i will share a uh, animation video with you and you can understand more better so must see the video after just i close the class and we will meet in the next we thank you experiment is leaf transpiration as always adult supervision is required what you need for this experiment is some leaves a ziploc bag bread ties or a string so to set up this uh, experiment you need a ziploc bag i'm using some bread ties you could also use some string and then you're just going to find a plant with some leaves that are going to be in directly in sunlight for two to three hours and so grab a whole bunch of those that fit in the bag and put them in and then wrap your bag around it so there's no air coming in and then seal it off uh, with the bread tie or the string did you know plants transpire it's kind of like people perspiring but not quite 
A simple analogy to help explain the act of transpiration is that plant transpiring is like a human sweating. Humans sweat by exerting water through pores to cool down. Similarity, a plant that goes through the transpiration to help carry the nutrients through the plant and maintain its structure. So what really is transpiration? Well, transpiration is the process by which the moisture is carried through the plant's roots, then the caterpillary action goes through the stem and to the small pores to the underside of the leaves where it changes the vapor and is released to the atmosphere, which we can't see. So we can see that uh, the experiment's set up and ready to go. Um, the bag is on, it's facing down, so the water will drip down to the corner down here. And it's securely tied off with the bread, bread ties. And so we're all ready to go, and it's in a nice sunny area. So we'll let it sit, and we'll check back on it shortly. So here it is about 15 minutes in, maybe about 20, and a little bit of water is already starting to evaporate. Um, it's really amazing because you wouldn't have saw any of this in your backyard of any of the vapors going up as it evaporates. But uh, by trapping it, we're able to really see this, so it's really cool. Transpiration is essentially evaporation of water from plant leaves. This happens faster and humidity is low, such as on a hot day, a windy day, or like today when it's about 100 degrees, so we're in perfect condition. This causes the water to evaporate quickly and the plant needs to suck up more water from the ground all the way up to the bag. Studies have revealed about 10% of the moisture found in the atmosphere is released from plants through transpiration. The remaining 90% is supplied by ev evaporation from oceans, seas, and other bodies of waters like lakes and rivers and streams. What I find amazing about this experiment is how much water is on the leaves and in the bag. Uh, plant tr transpiration is a pretty much an invisible process, and that's what makes it so cool. So since the water is evaporating from the leaf surfaces, you just don't go out and see these leaves sweating. Just because you can't see the water doesn't mean that it's not being put into the air, though. During this growing, uh, growing season, a leaf can transpire many times more water than its own weight. An acre of corn can give off about three to 4,000 gallons, or equivalent to 11 to 15,000 liters of water each day. And a large oak tree can transpire 40,000 gallons or 151,000 liters per year, which is just truly amazing. So uh, there's our water. We're going to go inside and measure it. This can be used um, to be drank uh, as a clean water source. So as long as it's not a toxic plant, um, you're able to drink this and, and is a way to survive out in the wilderness when you have no other water as long as you have a bag or a tent that you could collect it in. So here we are. We have just under a fourth of a cup, which is pretty amazing. Look in the description for a little bit more information. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to click thumbs up and to subscribe and let me know if you try this experiment and how much water you're able to uh, transpire. All right. Thanks for watching.